of course, SUV upholding of the conservative death. hierarchy. Wait Indian a minute. Hold up. The SUV of death. I feel targeted, and bro. And the train. <laughs> I feel the targeted, The train bro. of peasants. Yeah, yeah. What's good, y'all? It's the Duma Chef, Saria, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. So excited about this video. If you're new to us, and, and we're new, new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell. Because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. Let's get it. This is a typical American suburban street. It's wide, the houses are very far apart, and look mostly the same. There is barely anything on the well manicured lawns, post boxes, a few trees or bushes, and the occasional fire hydrant. Now compare this to a suburb in Leipzig, Germany. What differences do you notice? Together. First off, Narrow. there is stuff around you. The streetscape is very diverse and mentally engaging. In comparison, the American suburb looks like a desolate urban wasteland. What also in the European suburb, the street is narrow, there is a 30 km per hour speed limit, and the buildings are close together. Do notice the tram tracks. In this suburb, you can live car free. If you want to go to the okay. center, you can either take That's the train nice. or ride your bike for 20 minutes on dedicated bike lanes. That's nice. Okay. The train. He, he, he kind of lost me the, the last comment, but I understand. Wasteland. Okay. Yeah. What the? <laughs> or take the S-Bahn because there is also a train station. In the American suburb, you have no option but to drive. Head out onto the busiest road, a horrifying mix of street and road, onto the jammed highway, and after an hour, you'll be in the center searching for a parking spot. That I do like about the Europeans. The, the railroads, the bike lifestyle. It's really heavy culture out there. You know, different options to do what you like. Mm -hmm. Even if you try to go from A all the way to Z, you no know, A to B is like down the street. But yeah. A to Z is like I'm about to ride my bike to over here in grocery shop. You can do all that on a bike. Mm -hmm. But here's like literally a real big car culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it depends. The options you have for modes of transportation depends on the town that you're in. Like if it's a small town, you you may not even have a bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the bigger towns tend to have a little bit more. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. How about going to a restaurant? In the European suburb, there are dozens of different, unique, local restaurants reachable on foot, by bike, or public transit. In the American suburb, you're an hour walk away from a chain restaurant next to a busy road. If you want to eat, you gotta get in your car. I mean, not really. Fast food everywhere. What if you have yeah. children? In this European suburb, there are three schools close by. Kids can walk or bike there on their own and learn to be independent early on. In the American suburb, a child could get to school after 35 minutes of walking, mostly along a busy arterial road, also having to cross a six-lane road. And somehow, I mean, there's no crosswalk, so kids have to be driven to school every day by mommy and daddy. Don't we have crosswalks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, we got some crosswalks and, you know, yeah. the bus, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they do ride their bikes. Even scooters, you know what I'm saying? You may see some kids walking with the little skates on the end of their uh, shoes. Oh, yeah. They be yeah. walking and they start gliding. Yeah, they start gliding. I'm like, yo, <laughs> smooth, bro. Um, every, every town is different, but for the most part, I think now they have been putting in more crosswalks everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and bike lanes. Yeah, they've they been they've been trying. They've been trying to Yeah, um, especially school zones, of course. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Of so, um. Yeah, big facts. The same goes for sports. Over here, kids can take a 10-minute walk to the nearest sports field or a 3-minute bike ride mm. on calm, safe streets on their own. In the US, it's a 40-minute march through a maze of streets like partially march. along a major transit artery. Just, just Gotta get in the SUV it. and let mommy drive you to practice. <laughs> this is where the term soccer mom me. originates from, by the way. People Yo. are meant to these children for being overly dependent on their parents. But in such neighborhoods, children don't have a choice but to be dependent. Otherwise, they cannot go anywhere. They are stuck at home. In contrast, in European suburbs, Kids can be let out safely to move around on their own, to go to places they want to, without the need for the mommy and daddy taxi service. <laughs> taxi Do service. you know that? Like, he just, he just, he, he, he don't like really, us much. It's, he's trying his best to make it sound like we don't have options. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we have to depend on mommy and daddy. But I grew up in a culture where, you know, when I was real young, we walked. 
what I'm saying? I remember walk walking everywhere. down the hill, just to walk up the hill to get to the park and shoot mm -hmm. ball and go play whatnot. Um, yeah, we, and until today, I still see people walking around. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but I mean, again, it depends on exactly where the location. you live. Yeah, yeah. Like in smaller towns, the parks are across the street mm -hmm. or in the middle of the neighborhood. The neighborhood, yeah, definitely. In neighborhood. bigger towns, yeah, you'll have what he's describing. But I mean, he, yeah. he don't like us much. But it's the city life. If you're in the yeah. city life, you ain't about to walk to no park yeah. necessarily, say, because it's a distance then. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow residential building on the left, that is a mid-rise. European suburbs tend to be a mixture of those and single or multi-family homes, like on this street. Zoning in U.S. suburbs only allows for single-family homes, and they are usually placed very far apart, leading to low density and long distances. This makes public transportation non-viable. Over here in Europe, hundreds of people live within walking distance of this tram stop. In the U.S., if you put a tram stop here, you'd have a few dozen people living within walking distance. Meaning, even if you built public transit here, almost nobody would take it, because no matter how you build it, people would be too far away from it. If you're half an hour away on foot from the nearest tram stop, you'll take your car instead. And people do. So giant highways have to be built rammed right into the city, usually demolishing non-white neighborhoods in the process. The end result was mass motorization all across America, constant traffic jams, noise and pollution, but not for the suburbanites. It was the urban dwellers, particularly those who were poor, who had to live near high traffic areas in cheap, low quality housing. The suburbs also became a growth Ponzi scheme, where income from the suburbs couldn't cover future infrastructure overhauls, so the city had to expand and sell new properties constantly to get enough money to maintain what they already have. Not Just Bikes did a great video about this, link it description. The suburbs and car-centric development were useful political tools in the 1950s to enforce a Christian conservative, white nationalist hierarchy within American society, where white men are on top, women are at home, fully dependent on their husbands, and where all resources are channeled towards the white middle and upper class in the form of billions in state subsidies. And the rest of society, poor people, non-whites, were left to fend for themselves in decaying urban centers sucked dry financially by the parasitic suburbs around them. Car-centric planning became a weapon of choice for conservatives in order to maintain the unequal status quo. And this phenomenon isn't unique to America. In Europe, as our cities transition away from cars, the opponents of this change are almost always conservatives. While the incumbent Paris mayor campaigned on eliminating 50,000 parking spaces, her conservative opponent, who looks frankly diabolical even by French standards, wanted to halt the congestion measures. In Prague, a city overrun by cars, conservatives keep screaming about the cyclo-fascists ruining the city after a shadow is painted somewhere. Meanwhile, conservative district mayors are busy turning sidewalks into parking lots. In Madrid, the conservative city leadership cancelled the ultra-low emission zones, leading to local protests to bring them back. In Budapest, we have Orban's far-right conservatives screaming about how there is a witch hunt against drivers by the new center-left mayor, and complaining how in inner-city Budapest it's almost faster to walk now than to drive. Even in Germany, Bavarian conservatives are dumping money into highways while letting the rail network fall into disrepair. As a rule of thumb, in every city with decongestion measures, you also find conservatives screaming about the war on cars, the symbol of hierarchy in transportation, where the affluent suburban minority gets to occupy 80% of public space inside cities, compared to the more egalitarian space use of public transit and bicycles. God forbid you have to get out of your giant SUV of death and get on a tram with the peasants. Not of the course, SUV upholding of the conservative death. hierarchy Wait isn't one suburbs are built today. Oh, love, the SUV of death. I feel targeted, and bro. And the train, <laughs> I feel targeted, the train bro. of peasants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Um. Listen. I don't know. At first, I thought he was being a little hard on us, but baby, when he starts talking about y'all, <laughs> he went in on the politician. The politician, yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> but you gotta understand, we have like a growing class too, though. So because we already have like a car culture, they're adding highways regardless. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can literally wherever you look, you're gonna see them building an extra highway. Building it's an extra crazy highway. too, because it's like, when are they gonna stop? But when, they never stop. For real, it feels like once they finish one, the next one is already halfway done. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm the U.S. It's mostly just a necessary continuation of the Ponzi scheme that began with the first suburbs. Also, it's due to faulty zoning codes, not allowing for mid-rise developments that would actually make more money for the city, increase density, and make public transit viable. In Europe, our suburbs are mixed with both mid-rises, single, and multi-family homes. They're an organic part of the city and contribute fairly to the local budget. There is also subsidized, affordable public transit. All in all, it's more egalitarian. And if the U.S. situation sounds depressing in contrast, as an American, there are things you can do to potentially help change things. If 
there is a local transit riders union, go join it. Look if there are any initiatives on the ballot for traffic calming, bike lanes, etc. Show up to your local town hall meetings and advocate for zoning reform, ending parking minimums, and so on. If you're persistent enough, your ideas will be heard, and you can help push America back towards sensible, fair, more egalitarian urban planning, no. one neighborhood at a time. That's what I would do if I were you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Oh, he got it by the way. There is now a new membership option for my channel. All right, yeah. So make sure you guys go check his channel out, bro. Um, this is his work. So at the end of the day, you know, we have a lifestyle. We know mm -hmm. we, you know, we didn't ask for this. <laughs> That's how it is for us. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I stand with wifey. I like the cause, bro. I like, like my car. The cause, the cause is pretty nice. Yeah, you know I what like I'm my saying? car. It, um, it, it just take me back to like y'all can be putting the uh the uh the 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 the, the card. You know what I'm saying? The, the bus card. Huh? The bus card. No, the deck of cards. Okay. On the back of your tire, make that like motorcycle sound when you're riding. I, I don't follow. You never did that when you was young? No. no. You never stuck the, the tire, I mean a card in your tire? No. And then when you ride, it sound like a little bike? Mm-mm. Okay. I wasn't outside then. And when I was I outside riding my bike, I was riding it for about five minutes and yeah. back in the house. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about decoration, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> yes. Um, I feel like it works. Public transportation works. Mm -hmm. Um, but a person like me, with my children, my husband, my dog, I rather my own space. And I think that's what it boils down to. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like if you had a choice to have to be in your own space. Most people would choose that instead of having to sit on a ride or having to be in someone's face 24-7. Yeah, right? yeah. But some people like it. Some people, you know, they don't, the, the cost of everything is going up, you know. That's so a benefit. They'll rather. Not having to pay for everything. Uber. I've yep. heard of some people just using Uber Black and getting a little presidential treatment. That's <laughs> you it. Know? Hey, you can do that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, things like that, public transit. And it's it's okay yeah. for that. But for me, as for me and mine, we mm. like our car. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. We hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace.